Okay, this is video two for chapter 13. So it goes with section 13.2, and we are going to be finding the slope of a line. So slope has um, a few different formulas, a few different definitions here, but basically it's the steepness of a line. So it tells us how steep the graph is, right? If we're looking at a graph, it could be really steep or it could be not as steep. So how steep the line is going up is the slope, okay? So we look at it, um, we use the variable m, usually for slope, and we think about how steep it is by finding this ratio of the rise to the run, right? So if I'm looking at this point here, this line, I can look at how much it went up compared to how much it went over. So this is the rise, this is the run. And I would say that's a different, that would be a bigger number, a larger slope compared to this one. It didn't go up as high and it went over further, right? So if I compare the rise and the run to both of these lines, I can see that this one would give me a, a bigger number, a steeper slope, a bigger slope, okay? So another way to think about the rise is the change in the y value, right? From here to here, how much I go up is the change in the y. On the y axis here, that's your change in y or how much it went up compared to the change in the x. Well, the change in the x goes this way. So how much did you change from here to here or here to here? And when we compare those as a ratio, it gives us a way to kind of quantify the steepness of the line, okay? Well, if you think about the change in y, the change in y values from here to here, I would just subtract them to get the difference and figure out how much it went up. And the change in x is really just subtracting these two x values to figure out how much it went over, okay? So we're gonna do a bunch of examples looking at graphs and using the numbers on the graph to find the slope. So we just wanna understand that there are different kinds of slope, right? We always read a graph from left to right so as I read this graph from left to right, the value is increasing. The line is trending up. So that's what we call a positive slope. As we read the line from left to right, it's going down. That would be a negative slope. When it's exactly horizontal or kind of a flat line, that we say has a slope of zero. And when it fits perfectly up and down, a vertical line, we say that's undefined. And we're going to look at these two a little bit later again and see how we come up with that. All right, so here's example one, finding the slope of a line from a graph. So we've got our definition here that slope is rise over run, okay? And I've got my line, and they've actually pointed out a couple points here that I could use. Now, it doesn't actually matter which point you use along these this line, as long as you have two points where you know the quadrant or the co coordinates of it, right? The x and the y coordinates of that point, you can find the slope. All right. So first we got to figure out how much did it rise? How much did it go up? So they kind of draw in this triangle to help you see, oh, from here to here, it went up five. Okay. And then from here to here, it went over six. So when I put that together as rise over run, I get a slope of five sixths. Okay. All right. Let's try this one. Here are the triangles drawn in again. Now I can tell it's a negative slope. So now I'm looking and seeing that it went down, down three, just three here. I was confused by that number there. Down just three and then over two. So negative three over two would be my slope, okay? All right, so we've got a couple more. They might not draw the triangle in for you, but you can always do that, right? So I can always say, okay, here's my rise. I'm going to do it in pink on both of these. There's my rise. And then here's my run. So you're welcome to draw the triangle in, or you can simply look at the coordinates and say, oh, let me just count, right? How much did it go up? How much did it go over? So here I can see that it went up three over two, and it's a positive slope, three halves. Here I can see it went down one over three. So negative one third is the slope. Okay, so pause the video. You've got two down here to try. You find the slope using rise over run. So draw the triangles in or just kind of count your boxes. You need to decide what points you're going to use where you can easily see where they cross, you know, what the coordinates are. Don't pick, don't pick to use a point where it's kind of halfway through or you have to estimate it, okay? All right, draw your triangles in and find the slope. 
Okay, so I've drawn in my triangles. I see that this is a rise of four, but also a run of four. Well, four over four just simplifies to one. So that's a slope of just positive one. This one I recognize as a negative slope. It's gone down three over four, so negative three fourths. Okay, so flip it over. Let's look a little bit more at these horizontal and vertical lines. Well, we learned from on the front side that we were looking for rise over run, right? Or change in y over change in x. Well, now when I have horizontal and vertical lines, that gets a little complicated because I can't draw a triangle, right? When I'm looking here, I have a run, but no rise, okay? So that would mean from this point to this point, the rise is zero. So I would say zero, and then it doesn't really matter. Anything I put down here, right, I could look between any of these points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a run of seven still just gives me zero, okay? So these horizontal lines give you a slope of zero, and that's why we said on the front, horizontal lines, slope of zero, okay? Also, let's talk about the equation. We looked at the equation for these in section 13.1. So this is going to be just the y value is always 5. Well, that's your equation, y equals 5. So when you see an equation that's a horizontal line, slope of 0. This one, think about this equation. This is the equation where x is always equal to 4. I notice that I have all the points here along this line all have x equals 4. Okay, it's a vertical line. Well, now when I do change in y over change in x, looking at these points, let's see, I could say that the change in y is 1, 2, 3, 4, but the change in x, it doesn't change x at all. The x is the same, so the change in x is 0. And any time we divide by 0, this is undefined. We can't divide by 0, okay? So your vertical lines, or any line that has an equation x equals something that goes straight up and down, has a slope that we say is undefined. So again, I'm flipping back to the front. Here's what we said, that vertical line, the slope is undefined. Okay? Awesome. All right. Let's move on to find the slope between two points. Okay, so I don't have a graph anymore. I know I'm not going to be counting boxes or drawing triangles. I simply know the two points and I want to find the slope between them. Okay, well, I'm still going to use this y minus y, right? The change in the y and the change in the x. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to make an arrow that connects y and y and then an arrow that connects x and x. And I'm going to subtract those. And the key is I just have to make sure I subtract them the same way. Okay. So I'm always going to do 2 minus 6, right? I'm going to write down my formula, change in y over change in x. So 2 minus 6, subtract the y's, 1 minus negative 4, and then I'm going to work that out. Well, 2 minus 6 is negative 4, 1 minus negative 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, and that is my slope, okay? I want you to change this one. It's a zero, but I want you to change it to a six quick so we can look at this one. Always write down your formula, change in y over change in x. Draw your arrow, y to y, x to x. And I'm going to subtract. Six minus six on top, negative three minus one on the bottom. And then I'm ready to work it out. Well, six minus six is zero. Negative three minus one is negative four but that doesn't really matter because anytime you start with zero and divide it by anything, it's just zero. So this would actually end up being a horizontal line with a slope of zero. Okay. All right, next one. Change in y over change in x. Draw your arrows, y to y, x to x, and just subtract. Negative two minus five, and then four minus four. Well, right away I notice that this is going to give me zero on the bottom, and I can't divide by zero, so I know this is undefined. So this would end up being a vertical line, like we have up here, where the slope is undefined. Okay, So you have two to practice, where you're finding 
the slope between the points. Okay, so this is called slope formula, and it's really just find the change in the y's divided by the change in the x's and simplify if you need to. Okay, so write your formula down each time. I like to draw my arrows each time. So I connect my x's and connect my y's, and then pause and plug everything in and get your slopes. Okay, so I did 3 minus 2 is 1, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and that's simplified, negative slope. Now it doesn't matter if I write it like that or if I say negative 1 fifth, they'd be the same, same thing, it's a negative slope. Okay, here, change in y, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6, and I realized I could simplify that, okay, I simplify the numbers and... A negative divided by a negative is just positive one-third. <clears throat> so that has a positive slope. Okay? So, so far we've covered getting the slope from a graph, getting the slope from two points. What about getting the slope from a table? So, example four. This says the points in the table are on a line. Well, that's important because that means they're on a straight line, which means we can find the slope. Okay? So find the slope. We're still going to do change in y over change in x. Now the cool thing is it doesn't really matter which points I use. It'll give me the same slope once I simplify it down. Okay. So let's look here first. Right From 8 to 6, how much did that y change? Well, it went down 2. And then from 1 to 4, it went up 3. And that's my slope. Let's check another point just to make sure. If I want to go from here to here, change in y is down 2. And from here to here, up 3. So you can see it still gave me the same slope even when I use different points. Okay? So we'll set one more up together, and then you're going to pause and finish these two. Okay? So as long as they're on a line, you can pick any two points, and you're always just going to do change in y over change in x. So... Find the change in y, change in x, get your simplified fraction. Pause here and finish these two. Okay, I checked here and it went um, up 3 over 2. So the rise was 3, the run was 2, and that's already simplified. Okay, if I wanted to write it as a decimal, and sometimes you'll see slopes written as decimals, right? That 1 and a half would be the same thing. And this next one, Always write down change in y over change in x, change in y, change in x. That's what we're finding every time. So here I noticed that the y went down 2 and the x went up 1. And I did another one just to check. Yep, down 2, up 1. Okay, so there's my rise and my run, and that simplifies just to negative 2. Okay, so slope. Many ways to think about it. Rise over run. The change in y over the change in x, or actually subtracting the y coordinates, subtracting the x coordinates, and getting a simplified fraction. Okay? All right. That's it.